Hello! Dr. Boom's card was revealed today in addition to many others, so let's get right into it. First up is Kangor's Endless Army 7 mana legendary paladin spell that resurrects 3 friendly mechs. They keep any magnetic upgrades. This could be a great way to have a big swing towards the end of games. If you're able to make a bunch of strong mechs with other magnetic ones, then this could resummon you a lot of value. Unfortunately, there's a lot of issues with this card. First issue is that we don't know how many mechs Paladin will have. We only know of one other Paladin class card, a decent mech, but this is going to be highly dependent on what other mechs are printed for Paladin. Then there's the issue with resummoning weak mechs. This is only a one of in the deck, and if you truly want to make a big swing in your game, then you're going to want to resummon only powerful mechs. This means you're less incentivized to play these smaller mechs, because if your opponent kills them before you're able to buff them with magnetic cards, then your pool of mechs becomes a lot worse. I think you'd want this card to summon mechs with more than 4 4 stats, and you may say that for 7 mana, 12 12 stats is great, but as a late game push, and for this card to be an incentive to run mechs in Paladin, those stats aren't good enough. But Paladin Paladin is all about buffing minions, so if they get the right mechs to magnetize to each other, and if they only run a few strong mechs, then Kangar's Endless Army could work out. Next up is Dead Ringer, 2 mana 2-1 two, priest mech with the death rattle, draw a death rattle minion from your deck. This is a tough one because the only deck I could really see this fitting in would be Coffin Crasher. Dead Ringer gives you early game to specifically draw these powerful death rattles, and you're also able to play this cheaply so that Coffin Crasher doesn't pull it. But it also makes your minion and death rattle minion resummoning pool worse. The deck heavily relies on draw, and doesn't have to include the resummoning package, so as long as there's enough powerful death rattles to draw and tempo out, then this could work well. And speaking of tempo, Reckless Experimenter is a 5 mana 4 6 that went out on the board. Death Rattle minions you play cost 3 less, but die at the end of the turn. This is a more high value, high cost kind of card. You play a Death Rattle minion for cheap, but you're really only going to get its Death Rattle effect, because at the end of the turn, it's going to die. So I think this card also would work best in a Coffin Crasher deck, allowing you to play Coffin Crasher for cheap and summoning you an Obsidian Statue at the end of your turn. Maybe an even better option is to get Obsidian Statue you out on the board and then play Reckless Experimenter and Carnivorous Cube your Obsidian Statue to kill an enemy minion and summon two more at the end of your turn. Something holding Reckless back is its cost at 5 mana restricts what combos you can perform with this card, even at the Death Rattle minion's reduced cost. Where Dead Ringer is more focused on a lot of Death Rattles, Reckless Experimenter is better suited for a resummoning deck that has a small pool of powerful Death Rattles. In this deck, you're really only focused on resummoning a lot of Obsidian Statues and Coffin Crashers, and trying to make big swing plays to overwhelm your opponent and kill them. So while Dead Ringer and Reckless Experimenter are essentially both made for Coffin Crasher decks, they actually don't really work well together. So we'll see what Coffin deck ends up coming out on top. Next up is Faithful Lumai, 1 mana 1 1 mech with the battle cry give a friendly mech plus 1 plus 1, and oh my god it's so cute. Our prayers were answered and the community got a cute little light bulb dude. It's going to be hard to run this unless there's an aggro mech deck, but who could be mad at that face when it kills you on turn 4? Next up is Omega Agent, 5 mana 4 or 5, where if you have 10 mana, summon 2 more copies of this minion. So it's the Omega version of Doppelgangster, where instead you get 3 4 5s. This is an odd card for Warlock, in fact it's pretty bad for the class, and probably printed just to make sure Warlock doesn't get much better. Before 10 mana, the 5 mana 4 or 5 is obviously bad, but even on turn 10, yes, 5 mana for 12-15 stats is good, but it doesn't really fit the archetype of Warlock decks. Your good old Q-Block has better value options in the late game, and Zoo doesn't want the game to get to 10 mana. The best bet for this card would be to find a place in a tempo deck, but for the Warlock class, control and aggro decks just seem like a better option. Next up is Lab Recruiter, 2 mana 3-2 rogue minion with the battle cry, shuffle 3 copies of a friendly minion into your deck. So this card is like the retired gang up, but a minion and exclusively for your own minions. There's a lot of different places you can go with this card. A Kingsbane deck could use this to add more weapon buffing or weapon draw to their deck. A Tempo Rogue could use the decent stats and ability to shuffle Minstrels or Striders. Quest Rogue could use this, more Tesses, etc, etc. Basically, any minion you want more of, you can use Lab Recruiter. It's gonna be one of those cards that has a sprinkle of impact throughout its stay, working in a deck over here, and then the next expansion, this other deck. 
Its cheap cost and decent stats make it great for decks with particularly powerful minions and a lot of draw or time to draw these minions out of their deck. I'm excited to have a card like this back in the game. Next up, Weaponized Pinata, 4 mana 4-3 four, neutral mech with the death rattle, add a random legendary minion to your hand. While I enjoy the flavor of destroying a pinata and getting a prize, and the fact that you might be able to do some magnetic shenanigans with this, it's ultimately a pretty weak card. Stats are bad and the random legendary reward has proven to be un reliable and weak. If you want, for a meme, you can resummon this a bunch in Priest, or play this alongside a face collector in Rogue for an ultimate legendary fishing deck. Next up is Demonic Project, 2 mana warlock spell where each player transforms a random minion in their hand into a demon. So this is one of those cards to mess with your opponent. You can mess up a Shutterwalk, you can accidentally give your opponent a lot of value, you can give them Jaraxxus. When you play this card, you end up seeing what card you transform into a demon, and what the demon is, so that's pretty nice. But obviously this card is super niche, really low value, and inconsistent. You might see this played once or twice this expansion, but it's not really competitive. Next up is Unexpected Results. 4 mana mage spell that summons 2 random 2 cost minions and can be improved by spell damage. So you could summon 2 random 3 cost minions, 4 cost, etc. It's a new way of taking advantage of spell damage without directly going fireballs or frostbolts. This might be able to work in an aggro fast drawing mage deck, but the increase in value with spell damage is not only situational, but also not that much more value. The spell's baseline is pretty weak, 4 mana for 2 random 2 drops, and unless you can get spell damage effortlessly out on the board, then it's not really worth it. I'd be surprised if unexpected results saw play. And last up, finally, we have Dr. Boom Mad Genius, 7 mana hero card for warrior that gives you 7 armor, for the rest of the game your mechs have rush, and your new hero power is the big red button. And this big red button is a hero power that actually changes every turn. Your hero powers will randomly switch to one of the 5 different hero powers at the end of your turn, and you can't get the same hero power twice in a row. The first one of these hero powers is Micro Squad, summon 3 one one microbots. And remember, with the card's battle cry, these 1-1 mechs now have rush, so you can magnetize these first, or just trade them in for pretty good value. Zap Cannon deals 3 damage, it's very powerful and practical any turn. Blast Shield gains 7 armor, Kaboom deals 1 damage to all enemies, and Delivery Drone lets you discover a mech. So something to note about all of these hero powers is that they're good. I mean, no duh. But what I really like about them is that they're not really catered to one game plan in particular. Because it's random, you can't be dependent on your hero power to save you every turn, you just have to try to use it to the best of your ability. All of these are powerful, but it's the situation that dictates how useful they are. If you're low on health, gaining the armor would be better than dealing the 3 damage. If your hand is empty, discovering a bot is better than gaining 7 armor. Even though these hero powers are strong, the randomness really weakens this card. But the battle cry helps, because giving your mechs rush is pretty good. If there's a tempo or control warrior mech deck, then Dr. Boom is definitely going to see play. Buffing all of the mechs in your deck with Rush, along with the mechs you get off of this hero power, can really give you the edge over your opponent. It's a tough card to evaluate, because looking at the battle cry and hero powers with just this card in mind, it seems great. But compared this to other hero cards, with powerful burst battle cries, consistently strong hero powers, or value gaining hero powers that let them compete with control decks, not only does Dr. Boom's battle cry and some of the hero powers fall short, but the randomness of the hero power makes them even worse. It's definitely not the most powerful hero card out, but it can still make warrior decks better. I think it could have the biggest impact in a tempo mech deck a little on the slower side. You play this as soon as you can, make your mechs better, and use the random but almost always useful hero power powers to continue to push value on your opponent. It seems like a fun card, but its randomness may limit its ability for competitive play. Still, if you don't have a Baku or Gen hero power, and you aren't playing for the quest reward, then you may as well put this in your deck, because it's still a good card. Just not as crazy as some of the other hero cards. That is all for this video, another one's coming out right after this with a new Priest and Paladin card, and then another one tonight. Have a lovely day, and until next time, ta-ta!